Fomoy, County Cork, perched on the Blackwater River, famed for its coarse and salmon fishing, the home of Irish dancer Michael Flatley, and the place where Cornwall Supremo John Magnier was born. But I think the local tourist board are missing a trick, because surely Fomoy should be great for one thing and one thing only, because this was the place where the racehorse we know as the tank was created. Four men dominate Denman's early days. At Curran, breeders Coleman O'Flynn Senior and Coleman O'Flynn Junior. At Bally Hampshire Stud, Coleman Junior's brother-in-law Edmund Kent, and the gelding's first trainer, former Gold Cup winning rider Adrian Maguire. Coleman Junior took me to the box where Denman was born. In April, first in the year 2000, um, Polly Puttons, uh, I remember my father and I, we came out and um, we, I just, I, we just took back the afterbirth and I just put my hands on his legs and I remember saying to my father, Dad, I don't think we're going to get this fellow out, we better ring Edmund. <laughs> so uh, we, had to wait, we, like, we had such time to wait because she wasn't going to push him out anyway, so the three of us, we got him out eventually and, and God, what a fall, you know, presence, strength, bone. Unbelievable, you know, he was just, from day one, he was a cracker of a fall, you know. Your dad, who, who also is Coleman O'Flynn, um, he didn't scream out, oh my God, it's a tank, did he, by any chance? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> he always just gets a drop of holy water and put him on and say, thank God, he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, he certainly was. I mean, just tell us about the dam, of course, Polly Puttons. Yeah, Polly Puttons, yeah. My father bought Polly Puttons, we bought off Liam Cashman. Um, oh God, I can't actually remember what year. But uh, he was he, he met Liam and he just said, would you keep an eye out for a, a national a mayor for us or something for the young fella there? He said. So my brother now Edmund was was working at Rat Barry at the time. He was managing the farm for Liam, and um, there was two mayors for they were going to the sales. So it, my father asked Edmund to have a look at the mayors. So Edmund said there was there was a lovely big chestnut mayor. He said and um, he said there was a grand little bay mayor. He said. So by the time we got to actually see any of the mayors, the chestnut mayor was gone, bought. So all that was left then was the small bay mayor, which was Polly Puttons as such. And so um, my father bought her then as well. And of course, her night out to produce Denman was with presenting. Actually, while we, just before we chat about presenting and why you chose him, let's just have a look at him uh, winning at Doncaster one day. This was his maiden victory. And now presenting, reaching top gear in the centre, trying to challenge Bari. Racing down to the final furlong. Now Willie has to get to work on the jolly old favourite. He's not so jolly now because presenting's coming there strongly and takes over on the far side, Daunt, and then Witch Hunt. But presenting the leader, Daunt far side, Bari trying to rally stand side, presenting idly close home but held on to beat the favourite Barry. Why did you choose him? Well we, we had been very lucky with, with Rat Barry as such. Um, we, we took Strong Gale, we took Polly to Strong Gale three times and um, then we went to Fardenti and, and everything that was after coming from Rat Barry was after winning so my father always said look we stick with Liam because we, we've been lucky with him and um, so but he was the most gorgeous horse presenting when he came. I, I remember saying to some fellow I hope this fellow will be the next Strong Gale you know and um, little did he think that he'd, he'd turn out every bit as good, if not better, you know. So um, that's, that's why we use presenting. And, and this area around Fomoy, it, it has Gold Cup history. Does it, Dawn Run, didn't, didn't yes. she come from Yes, Dawn Run is only a mile as the crow flies over the road. Um, and Rat Barry is another mile. So it, it's steeped in, in Gold Cup history as such. Fomoy has a, a good history. and. Castlines, the whole lot. And coming back to Denman's early days, um, he obviously was quite a quite a thing when he came out. Um, as he developed from ages two to three to four, what did you make of him then? Yeah, he was uh, he was actually fed down. We reared him down in the stable there after he was weaned. And I remember, I, like I, as, as I was feeding him, Edmund just come the other time and have a look at him, and we, we'd say, like, cut back to feed him because this fellow was, was growing and growing and growing. We were hoping he. You know, we were worried in case anything had happened, he'd go wrong on his joints or something. So, and then he just settled down then as he went out to spring grass and he just grew and grew and just was just a, a huge tank of a horse from, from then on, you know. He, as a, as a three-year-old, he was, you know, he was 16 too, you know. 
he was just a fine big horse I remember himself in Silverburn I went I used to feed the two of them in a, in a field and they'd run down together and I, I'd have to, to wave them down in case they wouldn't stop you know because they, they were just so powerful the two of them was it his, his basically his stature to start with that, that perhaps suggested he might be a good horse? We were hoping he would, you know, he looked, he looked the, 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 the real deal as such and my brother-in-law, we, we had him and we took him down to Edmund to my brother-in-law and he broke him and he just said he was a pleasure to break, he, he just did everything right, never caused a day's trouble and he said he was just so laid back, he was a little bit worried, he thought <laughs> maybe is this horse any good at all, you know, that he was so laid back and... Um, so then I think Edmund had met Adrian, I think, at some sales or something. And That's he Adrian said, McGuire. Adrian McGuire, sorry, yeah. yes. And he said, uh, we have a horse there, you, you might be interested in training. So myself and my father, we were at uh, the point to points and we saw Adrian, so we introduced ourselves to him. And my father just said, that time he said he was lucky on, on their back, so he said maybe you might be lucky to train one of them. So hence we sent him um, Denman as such then. And he ran in your colours in, in the point to point that he won at, what was it, Liz He Carroll? did, yes, in Liz Carroll, ran yeah. in my father's colours that time. And Adrian just said, nothing, nothing will beat this horse today, you know. He said, it, I remember him saying it to me before we went. He said, in fact, he said, I think this horse could win a gold cup, he said. Down in the final fence, it's Denman by two or three lengths from just naturally and snow turn as they come to the last. Denman, a great jump in the last. That probably put a seal on things. And Denman showing a good turn of foot now. And he's beginning to pull right away. Denman putting up a fine performance here in his debut for Coleman Sweeney. He's had a great week and he's going to continue his winning ways. Denman for the Adrian Maguire Yard. I really did fancy him going there. He was doing everything extremely well and in the couple of, the couple of weeks leading up to it even, I, I kept saying to Coleman Flynn that, you know, he's such a big horse. Uh, you know, as we get closer to a run, when we'd be just turning the screw, he just might need to be let off because he was so big but he took everything he ate everything and we found ourselves found ourselves in uh, Liz Carroll um, I I met Terry Biddlecombe and Henry and Knight there at the races and I made it my business to uh, tell them to keep an eye on my horse my five-year-old uh, it was his first run um, I, I taught an awful lot of him and uh, so they looked at him, they were very impressed with him, he won very well and actually I can remember <clears throat> I can remember the day well because Coleman Sweeney rode him and rode him very well, uh, we jumped off towards the back because we knew he was going to be keen and um, after jumping two or three fences he was about third or fourth and never settled, pulled very hard throughout the race. He was a tank already. Yeah and you know he, he was just even when he was short at a fence, he was gaining a half a length or a length. Just always getting there too soon and, and very keen. And I stood beside uh, Michael Winters, my brother-in-law, and watched the race. And he kept saying to me, oh, he wins a minute, he wins a minute. But I was very concerned on how hard he pulled. And just before they came off the hill into the straight, uh, Coleman went to give him a, a shove. And for about two or three strides, it looked as if not much was going to happen and I turned my back and I said to Michael as I walked away I says no he don't get home he was too free but all the way up the straight it was further and further away he was going and the jump he thrown at the last and galloped all the way to the line you know it was uh, I thought it was an exceptional performance and uh, in my own mind I was thinking to myself you know with him being as free as he was and taking ground off and that he gained and galloped as strong as he did to the line and knowing what we knew about him before we went I thought this if ever a horse had a bit of luck he could make into a gold cup horse and obviously he was sold after he won his point to point why there'll be people saying you must regret now you could have a gold cup winner on your hands do you regret selling him or is it a business that that's what you do it's a business my father was retiring from uh, from the whole business of what he had a haulage company and everything he had a lot of money invested in horses down through the years so it was time to just to to get back and he was everything was being handed over to me then as such so uh, it was a hard amount of money to refuse at the time he still was a big horse you, you know us, tell he, us what, he, what you sold him for he was sir? he made a hundred thousand euros that's right. what he made at the time right. 
and um, but he was still he was still a big raw horse you know he, he could have went both ways like if you look back at the percentage of horses that are so big that make it it's very small you know you, you could have been proved wrong on a, on a split second in a race you know if he just didn't make it so it was just it was a hard thing to refuse at the time I now knew where Denman had been born and the joy he'd brought to his breeders. But it was clear Edmund had played a major part in breaking in the horse. I wanted to see the pen where all the hard work had been done. This is where he started his, his school. Um, a fine big laid back, four year old. Was he as lazy as everyone says? Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I, thought he'd, uh, I thought he'd be going out with the local kind of harriers with him. Hunting. And, and he'd already been hobdied, hadn't he? He had. Um, I'd taken him to the Tattersall sales, the Derby sales, and uh, he, we found he was just making a slight noise, nothing very serious. And Ned Gowan scoped him, and he told me he had a massive windpipe, and he said he'd be a fantastic candidate to hobday. So we knew then his price was going to be very deflated, so I spoke to... Um, my father-in-law, and uh, he said we get him hobdated and have a bit of fun and go point to point to him. So that's as far as I thought we were going to go. So Denman went from being broken in here to here. Adrian Maguire's taking yard in Mallow. Adrian will never forget the day Denman turned up. Well, first of all, myself and a good friend of mine, Tom O'Mahony, we were going around looking at horses uh, local to us that were going to the sales to the derby sale and uh, uh, we happened to uh, call into Coleman Flynn's yard and uh, he had a horse there going uh, by presenting which was Denman and um, he was spun for his wind. Uh, you wouldn't be in love with him, <clears throat> the way he jogged up and walked, he was very, hit the ground very hard um, but very imposing, big strong horse. Um, so I, I was lucky enough that um, I happened to win on Potter's Bay and Potter's Gale and they were the same family as Denman and when the Duke was training and uh, the old uh, <coughs> Mr O'Flynn he followed his horses you know quite closely when the Duke had them that he bred and uh, he sent them on to me then to uh, run and sell from a pint to pint. Um, from the first day we got him he was drove and uh, I wouldn't have said there was much riding done on him but um, from the first day we put a saddle on him to when he won was five months, so it's uh, not <clears throat> not every horse can do that. It's uh, it's um, once in a blue moon, I would think. He was big and strong, and uh, he was a forward-going type. Um, had his own ideas about things for a while. Uh, he came up off the gallop loose a few times, um, but once we got the challenge, you know, just to uh, channel it. Uh, he, he, you know, he was very, very good. A uh, little bit windy to start off with schooling, um, but uh, as I find, the ones that are a bit careful starting off schooling and things, they usually end up being the best, you know. We know from Coleman that he was sold for 100,000 in the end. Um, were you in bits at that moment? I mean, we, presumably you'd have loved him to have stayed with you. No, not at all. I, I was... Um, I felt that we, you know, I had a job to do and, uh, and, and we got it done and uh, he was always going to be sold. That was the, um, that was the talk we had when, before he came here, that we could win a maiden point to point with him and, and sell him and that's the way it turned out. And Corto Star and Denman are 1-1 at Cheltenham, of course, Corto 2-1 as far as Gold Cups are concerned. Do you expect Denman to get his second Gold Cup in 2010? I do, yeah. Um, I think last year, I think it was an exceptional run from a horse that had a, a heart problem and uh, you know, a blind man would have seen that it wasn't the true den man at Cheltenham. He was pretty lethargic through the race. He never grabbed a hold of it and travelled like he, like his old self. And for him to finish second to Cato Star like that, um, I thought it was an exceptional run because he wasn't back to himself. Now, um, it was very unfortunate to see him fall in Liverpool, and he raced very similar in in Liverpool behind the bridle and not grabbing a hold of it like um, and, and took a heavy fall um, I was delighted to see him come out now even if he hadn't have won the Hennessy this year I, I was just delighted with his attitude and the way he grabbed a hold of it and travelled and jumped 
But saying that, uh, Ruby was brilliant on him. He gave him every chance. He pulled, jumped off wide, gave, gave him a chance to get into his stride. And when the horse did grab a hold of it and wanted to go, Ruby didn't disappoint him. He let him float along in his hands. And uh, it was just brilliant.